next we will discuss about pyogenic liver abscess now the most common route of spread of pyogenic liver abscess it is from the biliary tract so next we will discuss about pyogenic liver abscess now the most common route of spread The most common route of spread of pyogenic liver abscess it is from the biliary tract. And from the biliary tract there can be cholangitis due to CBD stone, cholangitis due to CBD stone and it is the most common cause. After that, there can be empyema, gallbladder, there can be biliary ascariasis. After that, the, it can occur after instrumentation, instrumentation or after biliary tract surgery. Sometimes it can occur after biliary enteric anastomosis. So these can be the various causes of biliary tract disease. Now next, pyogenic liver abscess. The next cause it can be from portal vein. So we can have portal vein sepsis. And this portal vein sepsis, it can occur in conditions like appendicitis or inflammatory bowel disease. So this portal vein sepsis can occur in appendicitis or portal vein or inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease. After that, the infection can reach to the liver through hepatic artery. So, we can have due to hepatic artery. Hepatic artery. So, the hematogenous spread from the hepatic artery can occur from a distant site like pneumonia upper respiratory tract infection then you can have endocarditis then after that there can be osteomyelitis osteomyelitis or bacteremia clear now sometimes there can be direct extension from an abscess below the diaphragm like subdiaphragmatic abscess so next in the list is direct extension direct extension and it can occur from a subdiaphragmatic abscess or from a perinephric abscess perinephric abscess or from empyema of chest and sometimes in suppurative cholecystitis okay. now there is a term which is called as cryptogenic liver abscess when the cause of liver abscess cannot be known it is termed as cryptogenic liver abscess so next cause it can be number fifth is cryptogenic liver abscess when no identified primary infection. Now next cause it can be after trauma. So after trauma there can be a hematoma formation in the liver. Now this trauma it can be due to penetrating or blunt trauma abdomen 
there can be hematoma formation in the liver which can get infected and can get converted into a pyogenic liver abscess now after that let us discuss the various causative organisms causative organisms now e coli it is the most common causative organism of pyogenic liver abscess in western countries whereas klebsiella it is the most common causative organism of pyogenic liver abscess in indian or asian countries so if we see e coli it is most common causative organism in western countries whereas klebsiella it is most common causative organism in asian countries now the most common causative organism in children suffering from chronic granulomatous disease it is staph staphylococcus so the most common causative organism so staphylococcus it is the most common causative organism in children suffering from chronic granulomatous disease now in 60% of the cases this pyogenic liver abscess it can be a solitary abscess so in 60% cases it is a solitary abscess whereas in rest of the 40% of the cases it can be bilobar or it can be multiple abscesses in the liver now after that now here also if we see what is the most common lobe involved again it is right lobe of the liver so please remember that the most common lobe involved in both pyogenic and amoebic liver abscess it is the right lobe of the liver now after that let us discuss the clinical features clinical features now the most common clinical feature in a patient with pyogenic liver abscess it is fever so the most common symptom it is fever now other clinical features with patient may present with it is pain in the right hypochondrium then jaundice and jaundice is present in 20% cases then the patient may present with right hypochondrium tenderness or there can be intercostal tenderness intercostal tenderness can be present clear now there is an important term which is termed as endogenous and ophthalm mites what is this endogenous and ophthalm mites it is mainly seen in diabetics and it is seen due to infection of klebsiella so it is seen in patients of klebsiella pyogenic liver abscess so it is mostly seen in diabetics common in diabetics and it is due to klebsiella klebsiella hepatic abscess now next let us discuss the diagnosis part now i told you the most common the most common lft abnormality in amoebic liver abscess it was widening of prothrombin time whereas in pyogenic liver abscess what is the most common lft abnormality it is increased levels of alp so the most common lft abnormality the most common lft abnormality is increased alp so you can remember it pyogenic liver abscess you have to reverse it it will be alp clear 
Now after that, the TLC counts will also be increased in such patients. TLC counts, they are increased. Now I told you jaundice will be present in 20% cases with increased levels of bilirubin. Now if we do the ultrasonography, it has sensitivity of 90%. Whereas a CT scan, it has sensitivity of 97% and it will show the size, the location and the number of abscess cavities. Now after that, if we do the chest x-ray, chest x-ray will show tenting of the right hemidiaphragm or elevated right hemidiaphragm. Also there will be right sided pleural effusion which is also called as sympathetic pleural effusion. So what will be the chest x-ray findings? There will be there will be tenting of the right hemidiaphragm. After that, right sided sympathetic pleural effusion. Now, which is the investigation of choice for confirmation of diagnosis? It is aspiration of the pus and culture of the pus. No. So, the investigation of choice for confirmation of diagnosis, it is aspiration and culture of the pus. Aspiration followed by culture. Next, let us discuss the treatment part. Now, the treatment of choice, the treatment of choice in pyogenic liver abscess, it is IV antibiotics and we go for percutaneous drainage of the abscess. So, treatment of choice is IV antibiotics plus percutaneous catheter drainage which is also termed as pigtail drainage. Now what are the antibiotics that can be given? It includes third generation cephalosporins along with metronidazole. Clear? Now let's, next let us discuss the surgical management when we have to go for open surgery in cases of Biogenic liver abscess. Now let us discuss the indications of open surgery. Now what are the indications of open surgery in a case of pyogenic liver abscess? Now the first indication is in cases of recurrent abscesses. So first is a recurrent abscess. Then if there is failure of percutaneous drainage, suppose the pus is thick loculated pus and we are not able to do the pigtail drainage or the percutaneous drainage then in that cases we have to go for this open surgery so failure of percutaneous drainage after that if the size of abscess cavity is large if it is more than 5 cm then we have to go for open drainage so size of the cavity more than 5 centimeters that means large abscess it is an indication for open surgical drainage clear so this was all about pyogenic liver abscess